Troy Kearns bring it to you from the Holy Cross neighborhood in New Orleans, Louisiana. A couple years ago, my business partner and me purchased matured tax liens. So those are tax liens that have taken the time and already matured, meaning the time has run out for the owner to redeem their interest in the property. We bought it for $3,000, so we had no waiting on the tax lien, we could take the property right then and there. Because in New Orleans, you have Napoleonic code, they have something that is referred to as forced heirship. So when someone passes away and they don't have a will and they don't have a trust, the state of Louisiana forces it down to their heirs. So things get really spread apart. Nobody had been paying the taxes on this property for a long time and people left it to go. So what did we do? We found out who owned the tax liens. We bought the tax liens from there. Then we negotiated with most of the family members. We had one person hold out on us, but we got the whole property or at least 96% of this property. So we have a couple strategies here. We can fix it up, which we're doing right now, which in New Orleans, you can get reimbursed for your costs when you go to sell it because those are improvements. Like if you look right there, we just tore out the roof. Any of the money we spend, we can recapture that. And we can clean up these units and rent them out. Let's go look at one. I love these big, beautiful houses. Oh, we got a good little knife here. Um, they're just irreplaceable. They were built a long time ago. This doesn't look like much right now, but it's gonna look like something when we're done with it. Literally the last guy in here just croaked and uh, Great movie. I'm not gonna be ignored, Dan. The last guy croaked, and so we are taking his belongings. We've already contacted the people that don't want nothing to do with it. And we're gonna fix this property up and we're gonna rent it out for cash flow. We're in it for $3,000 for the cost of the tax lien, plus the cost to fix the property up. So far, we did a new roof. We've got our hot water tanks. I don't like this metal. We've got our hot water tanks. I think I just bent this metal right here. <laughs> so make sure you lift up before that. We've got our hot water tanks. We've got the exterior painted. We've got to fix this side up. Let's go take a look at the other side and see what's going on there. Definitely not trying to put too much money into a property that we only own 96% in. How do we get out of it, right? 96%. It doesn't matter. We control the asset, we control the cash flow. So if we're controlling 100% of the cash flow, but we only control 96% of the asset, who really cares? That's just in your mind. We control the asset, we control the cash flow. We want cash flow. We're in this deal for $3,000 plus the cost of repairs. That's it. So tax liens are the most profitable, the most profitable when they mature, but it's a waiting game. You got to wait a long time, but if you buy them when they're already matured and there's guys who sell matured tax liens because in states like New Orleans, Mississippi, all over across the country, they're going to give you a return on that investment of here. I think it's 18% in Mississippi. I definitely know it's 18%. So you're going to get one and a half percent per month by investing in that tax lien. If they go and redeem their tax mean, which means they pay off their taxes because they have a redemption period, it means it gives the original owner time to redeem it so that you can't just take their house away from them. Once that period expires, it's your house, free and clear. The tax lien squashes any and all liens. So it's a great way to invest. Let's go and look at the other side. One really cool thing that I love is these big, beautiful oak trees. This oak tree is probably 300 years old. That's why this sidewalk looks like the way it is. But this is New Orleans and I kind of like it this way. So this is the one we've already started working on. It's almost done. We just painted the floors. It's the easiest way to do it. It's the cheapest way to do it. Cute little house. First time I've been inside it. We'll probably get, you know, 700 bucks, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. The repairs are gonna be paid off very quickly. We're getting one side ready, then we'll move on to the other side. So how are we gonna get our money back, right? Let's say we didn't wanna hold it for 10 years. That's where you talk about a partition sale. So because of the everybody owning the property or us having a forced airship and partial ownership in a property, to get away from partial ownership, what we have to do is we have to go and do a sheriff sale. We would be able to put our cost into that sale. We'd be able to put a mortgage against the property to protect our interest, and then we could go and 
or close on the property at the auction, that'd wipe out the partial ownership and we could actually go bid on it ourselves and buy it or we can just take the cash for whoever bids on it. There's a lot of ways to get out of real estate. You gotta be creative. You gotta know the laws of the land and you gotta know how you're gonna get out of it. So we're not in a rush to fix this property up. We've actually totally forgotten about it. We owned the property for a couple of years, but it took us that time to work out some of the kinks with the ownership. Because originally we had like 75%, so we got it up to 96%, which is a controlling interest in the property. But that took a couple of years. And then we sat on the property because we were working on a deal with a guy that wanted to come in and fix the property. But instead we said, you know what? We're gonna fix it ourselves, ride it out. And then once this thing's fixed up, we've got lots of options, but we'll probably just rent it out as a cash flowing asset. These are easy houses to fix up. You see that the floors were painted originally. We'll just clean it up, put a rent in there, offer them a great deal on price. We don't try to go all the way on every property. When we're flipping a property, we go all the way. When we're renting it, we clean it up. We always work on affordable housing. I'm not the guy who's renting out million dollar properties. I'm renting out affordable housing. I'd rather offer the tenants a very inexpensive rent versus do all the bells and whistles on the property. So rather than do all the bells and whistles on the property, I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? We're not putting a central HVAC system in this property. We're probably gonna put a mini split. We're not gonna put window units because that is a pain in the butt. Put like a mini split, duck list. Those are like $4.99 a piece. For installation, we'll probably be in at $1,000 a side. It'll cool and heat the unit. It'll satisfy whoever's living in there. And if they want an HVAC system in here, that's gonna be about $15,000, which we're not willing to spend. That tenant is not gonna move in with us and that's completely okay. And if we can't rent it for 700 that way, then we'll reduce the rent because we're in it so cheap, we don't care. We wanna get the most amount of money we can with doing the least amount of repairs we can in a rental like this. And the reason I say it is because we don't own 100%. So even though we can get that money back, we may not be able to get it back right away because we're not gonna do a partition sale right away. That's only an exit strategy if we needed to get out. We might take a long time to do that. We might never do that. We might sit on the property for the next 10 years. Just be aware that there's multiple ways to do deals and sometimes deals take time. If you're not in a rush in real estate, you make a lot of money. And if you're gonna buy tax sales and tax liens, that is the best way. Make sure when you buy tax liens that you drive the properties and you find out what the situation is. Did the people die? Are there heirs that even have an interest? Do your research because the tax sales that you're gonna get are the ones that you know the information on. If you know the information on that property, you're probably gonna get the tax sale. If you don't do your research, you buy somebody who just forgot to pay their taxes, they're gonna redeem it right away. You're not gonna make any money on the interest and you're just going through the motions. My recommendation is when you're buying real property that actually has something that's improved on it, then definitely drive it and understand what you're investing. So there's a bunch of weasels in the tax game that'll teach these seminars about how to do stuff. It's not that complicated. Nowadays, you could check sites like GovEase, I think is the name of it, out here in New Orleans is Civil Sheriff. But there's all these bidding sites that counties use, and there's some crooked counties out there. I can tell you one in particular in Mississippi, they said, oh, you have to physically come in and deliver the form. I'm like, can I mail it? Can I send it to you? No, 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 you gotta come in. Why? Oh, that's just how we do it. No, it's to do it so they can not have outside investors besides people who actually live in that state or that county or where it is. So there's still some good old boy stuff happening in real estate in your market. So just know where you're at and know how you can make money. And if you don't know how to make money, then you need to subscribe to my channel and you need to make sure that you're following me and you ask questions and you comment because we will definitely do a video on it if I know the information. And if I don't know the information, I'm gonna find the guy that's gonna explain it to me and we're gonna do a video on it for you. So subscribe, hit the notifications and make sure that you invest in tax sales and then make sure that you understand that real estate, time is on your side. Time, time is on your side. This neighborhood's turning and the longer we hold it, we got a double lot here. Well, we this place isn't a, it's a neighborhood, it's not just for real estate vampires, you know that, right? Excuse me? So I want to let you know, we just had some neighbor walk by, give me a bunch of trash talking. That's just haters, man. Like the fact that we're improving this property, he don't like. Don't improve a property because you're a real estate vampire. In fact, what we're doing is we're improving properties. And then when I went over and talked to him, he likes to talk crap, but he doesn't like to back it up. Don't write a check with your mouth that your ass can't cash in anything. And when you buy real estate, 
make sure you're improving the neighborhood and you get to know the neighbors. A lot of these people, they love to see us improve this property. They don't want to see a wrecked house. So long story short, when you're investing in real estate, tax liens and time is on your side. There's a multiple ways to get into the tax lien game and there's multiple ways to get out of it. Understand how to invest in real estate, and understand there's different situations, there's different rules, there's different constitutions, know the laws of the land, try to get along with everybody when you're doing a deal. We had a little episode with this guy. Don't let people push you around. So make sure when you invest in real estate that you understand there's haters and make sure when you invest in tax liens that you understand there's a lot of money to be made in it and time is really on your side. Thank you for watching and subscribe, comment. If you like what we had to say, appreciate it.